All right, let's see if this is any better. <laughs> Jeez. So we had a little technical difficulty there. Um, probably uh, we lost some people, but they'll come back. Let's see. I um, I I clicked the go live button and um, it just got stuck. It just says going live, going live, going live, but it never went live. So I hit the refresh and killed the flipping live stream. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, I'm here. <laughs> oh, technology. Hey, um, I got, I got a crazy, uh, crazy thought here. This is, I know this sounds crazy. I mean, you'll think that I have this huge tin hat on. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I know this sounds crazy. I mean, it's not really. What if the, what if the war in the Ukraine was not real, not really happening? It was all made up on TV. <laughs> you know, they made a movie about that years ago, with uh, Dustin Hoffman in it, and um, um, what's I forget the guy, other guy's name, the other big actor. Anyway, it's called Wag the Dog. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, you know, those people tell us what they're going to do all the time. They, they tell us all the time. All right. Um, I, Jason, what happened is I clicked the go live button and always before it spins and like three seconds later, it says you're live. But this time it just got, it just kept stuck. It just said going live, going live, going live. It, I mean, it just didn't do anything for 30, 40 seconds. So I tried to refresh the page and that killed the stream. All right, but I'm here now. Um, okay. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit about Originally, I was going to talk about deck sealing and uh, cleaning, and I want to still do that. And I have a uh, pretty neat column that you need to see. I'm trying to pull up the uh, URL right now. And um, this has got a pretty interesting video in it. This video that's in this thing, you'll see me wearing a firefighter helmet. I happen to have one. I've got bunker pants. Um, anyway. They're really warm. If you ever want to wear really warm pants in the winter, just go to a firehouse and see if you can buy a used set of, of gear, actually. If you can buy a, the firefighter's coat and the pants, because remember, they're waterproof. I mean, you couldn't have better gear for, for, for winter wear. So if you, and actually, if you, I doubt that if you were a stranger, I doubt they'd sell it to you because they might think that you're going to try to impersonate a firefighter. But if you know somebody on the fire department or a uh, somebody on a volunteer department, you might be able to get some. Hey, Don, how you doing? Hi, Brian. Um, all right. So we're going to talk uh, about a lot of things today. But first, I'm going to talk about deck cleaning and sealing. It's really a big topic. Uh, you're not going to, no one here in New Hampshire is going to do it for another month. But people down south, Florida, Southern Tier, Southern California, they could be doing it right now. All right. Um, okay. Um, here's what you need to know. If you have a traditional wood deck, most people who have wood decks that need to be clean and sealed, first of all, we're just going to talk about wood decks. We'll talk about composites in a minute. And as I go along, if you have any questions about something that I'm saying, just put it in the chat. All right. So I'm not clairvoyant. All right. And also, if you have any other questions about any other part of your house, put them in the chat. I'll get to them. The um, but for now we're just going to talk about wood decks, and we're and primarily we're going to talk about treated lumber, because that makes up a majority of all the decks in the United States. Um, there aren't that many people that have redwood, there aren't that many people that have cedar, there aren't that many people that have the expensive um, rainforest like Ipe and some of the other ones. Uh, those are you know those are high end products. So let's just talk about first the the, the treated lumber. You have, I'll just, I'm going to start with this quick story. So I remember when treated lumber first came out and it first started to be marketed to people. It was in, it was in the mid 1970s. And I'll never forget, um, there was a placard, you know, like about an 11 by 14 or 11 by 17 glossy placard on the counter of the lumber yard I used to visit. And it said, you know, never needs maintenance, never, you know, buy this treated lumber You'll never do anything again. <laughs> you know, and 
people are like, okay, including me. I mean, I'm 22 years old, you know, 23. You know, what happens when you're young like that, and even as some people get to middle age, they actually believe <laughs> what they see on TV and they believe on ads and they believe news anchors. <laughs> Big mistake. <laughs> Big mistake, especially today. All right. So anyway, it turns out that they lied. All right. <laughs> You know, maybe you give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they weren't lying on purpose. Maybe they actually thought it was going to never need maintenance. But here's the truth. I talked about this yesterday a little bit. I've talked about it in past streams. The um, You have to understand that the sun, the ultraviolet rays from the sun, and you already know this. You know this because you've seen other things that you have left outside get damaged. All right. You've seen old cars paint fade. You've seen um, a flag that you have that used to be in great shape. It, it basically gets shredded. You see the colors fade in the flag. Okay, well, what's causing that? What's causing it are photons that are in about 5% of the ultraviolet rays. And think of a photon as this very tiny, highly energized particle that's like a miniature cruise missile. And I mean, when it comes and it hits... Remember, it's traveling at 186,000 miles per second, all right? Pre traveling pretty fast, all right? And when it hits whatever it strikes, whether it's your deck lumber, whether it's a flag, whether it's your swimsuit that you hung up on the line, uh, whether, it's, uh, whether it comes into the window and hits your upholstery, um, it explodes. I mean, it hits a molecule, poof, blows it up. I mean, seriously, just poof. all right. Well, so if enough of them hit, they, um, they, that, that's why it breaks apart the synthetic dye molecules. That's why the, the flag doesn't look the same color. Um, that's, why the, that's why the awning at the mobile station um, was, was so fragile that an ice ball went, went right through it. That's a story you have to get me to tell you another day, all right? Um, Actually, I'm I'm about to I'm going to write that story and maybe I'll just share it to you that way. It's better if I just write it. It's going to be much better. Um, so anyway, it does the same thing with wood. the The photons will discolor wood. That's why your deck turns gray, and um, and you'll and, and it also destroys the wood fibers. All right, especially the spring wood, which is the lighter color wood between the two dark bands. Here's the other thing that happens. You, unless you live in the Atacama Desert where there's no vegetation, your deck is getting sugars on it, aerosol sugars from nearby trees. If you, especially if you live in a deciduous area where you have a lot of maple trees, th there's all these microscopic droplets of sugar that are coming onto your deck. There's all kinds of other debris and organic stuff that's floating down onto your deck. And as soon as it rains, um, that turns into food for mildew and mold spores. And the mold spores are there too. Outside, there's trillions and trillions of mold spores. So that's why your deck turns black and just gets covered with algae and mold. All right. So you just have to understand the biology, what's going on. In other words, you cannot stop that from happening. You cannot stop your deck from getting mold and mildew on it. It's like anything else. If you want a pristine, beautiful looking deck, then you have to get out there maybe once every two, three weeks, depending on the exposure, with just a little bit of liquid Dawn dish soap and uh, a push broom. You don't need a stiff, you don't need a stiff scrub brush. You just need to get your deck wet, squirt a little bit of Dawn dishwashing soap, take a big, nice, soft push broom and just go around and wash the deck and rinse it off. And you'll, you'll not have a mold or mildew problem. It's a little harder to do that with the, the, the handrails, a lot more work. Now, Cleaning a deck. What's the best way? Let's talk about the worst way first. If you have any questions, remember, put them. Um, hi, Victor. How you doing? Um, hi, Vanessa. How you doing? Um, he, let's talk about what not to do. First of all, pressure. a lot of people just love pressure washers and the manufacturers of pressure washer, you know, they, they, they advertise them. Oh, this is a great product. This is a great machine to clean decks with. Um, I say no. Uh, here's why. Have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? So the Grand Canyon, <laughs> solid rock, <laughs> 12 million years ago, it didn't exist, all right? 
I know that's a long time, but just the water flowing down the Colorado River, just, uh, you know, it's not high pressure. <laughs> it's just water flowing over the rock. It erodes rock, <laughs> solid rock. <laughs> so you tell me what you think a pressure washer at 2000 or 1800 PSI can do to really soft wood that you can scratch with your finger now. All right. <laughs> Once again, just like the T-shirt. In fact, I have to show you my T-shirt today. Um, nothing about this is hard. It's a. It's all about using your critical thinking skills. So when you, when you hold your hand in front of a pressure washer, which I don't recommend doing, but you might try it one day when it's far away and bring it up until such point as to where it really hurts your hand. You'll go, this is insane. I, I never want to use this on wood. Of course not. Of course you don't. Pressure washers are bad. Everything about them is bad. I mean, they work for other things, but you're just making a mistake if you use it on wood. Because what happens is you'll erode the soft spring wood. The soft spring wood is the wood that's starting to grow right now. Uh, the sap is running here in the trees in New Hampshire. The trees are coming back to life. And they're going to start putting on that light band of wood, you know, here in New Hampshire, like next month and then, then up until about July. And then in July, the tree transitions and it starts to put on the dark band of wood. Remember, each year there's, you know, in a for 12 months, there's two bands of wood in a tree. One's light, one's dark. One's spring wood, one's summer wood. Pressure washers ruin the spring wood. They'll make your deck, if you use a pressure washer, they'll make your deck look like an old fishing pier. You don't want that. So let's say you're going to you're going to follow the, you're going to go online you're going to read a bunch of columns at a bunch of websites. They're still out there. I see I actually get press releases from public relations people every spring and the advice is still there. It's been there for 45 years. They say get a bottle of chlorine bleach, you know, a bottle of Clorox, put it in a bucket and then add a gallon of flipping water. So a gallon, you know, 50-50 mix. 50% chlorine chlorine bleach, 50% water. And remember, this, the chemical name for chlorine bleach is sodium hypochlorite. Sodium hypochlorite. So if you see that name, that chemical name on a product, do not buy it. Do not buy it. Here's why. Sodium hypochlorite, chlorine bleach. It will take the, it's so powerful, it will take, the, it's such a strong oxidizer, it will take the color out of the wood. Number two, um, it will accelerate the corrosion of any of the metal fasteners or joist hangers on your deck. All right. You don't want that. I mean, you, if you've ever seen any metal work like regular iron or steel at a public swimming pool, have you ever seen how rusted it is? It's because of the chlorine bleach they put in the water. All right. That's why everything at a swimming pool has got to be stainless steel. And even chlorine bleach will hurt stainless steel. Uh, so, and then it's toxic to all of the vegetation and everything around your deck. So if you've got thousands of dollars worth of vegetation, eventually you'll kill it because when that chlorine bleach gets into the soil, after, as you rinse the deck, it poisons the uh, plants. Um, I had a neighbor of mine back in Cincinnati. She systematically killed this absolutely stunning, beautiful um, maple tree uh, by wash every spring, she would take four or five bottles of chlorine bleach and literally just pour them over the patio around her, her, her house. And this tree, all the tree roots were under this patio, or many of the roots were. And she was about 10 years older than I was, maybe even 15. And, you know, I was in my 30s and show, and she was a real uh, firebrand. She was a real no, she was like the alpha, alpha, alpha in the marriage. Her husband was this very meek uh, guy. And I mean, she just, when, when she said jump, he said, how high and where do you want me to land? All right. But he was a nice guy. Anyway, <laughs> crutch word. She, I, I told her one day, you know, she and I didn't get along too well. I mean, we had this symbiotic relationship, you know, and it's, it's a whole long story why we didn't get along. It was all her fault. All right. So crutch word. I told her, I said, hey, Bar hey, hey, Barbara, I said, uh, I just thought I'd let you know that you're killing your tree. <laughs> and she was like, what? And I said, the chlorine bleach is toxic. It's poisonous. Tree. You should never do that. Just 
just use some regular dish soap. Oh, it doesn't work. doesn't work as well. I said, I know it doesn't work as well, but you're killing your tree. So what happens is every summer, you know, she'd see the tree was a little sick and she would have the tree people come and they'd put these things in the trunk and it, it just kept getting worse and worse. You know, and I, I finally told her, I said, you're killing the tree. You know, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Well, eventually they came and cut the tree down. <laughs> you know, I mean, some people just don't think to me, you know, I mean, they just don't believe me. All right. I get it. All right. You know, you, you know, and she just, she just thought she was a know-it-all. Well, she didn't know it all about that. So anyway, too bad for her. <laughs> so anyway, the best way to clean a deck, the best way to clean a wood deck, I, I'm going to. I'm going to promote my own product, but if you want to get a crappy one, if you want to go out and buy a cheap one and a crap one that doesn't work, then go do it. But this is the best cleaner for a wood deck, stain solver. Seriously. It's a powdered oxygen bleach. You mix it with hot water and you put it on the wood. Keep it, keep the wood wet with a solution for about 15, 20 minutes. Don't do anything. Just let it alone. Make sure you apply it to dry wood. And then at the end of the 20, 30 minute, wait period, go ahead and scrub it lightly with a, a brush, rinse it with clear water, you're done. The wood's going to look brand new. Just go to stainsolver.com. There's all kinds of columns there about cleaning a wood deck. Um, anyway, I got to turn my phone down. My son is blowing up my phone with flipping text messages, you know, so, geez, gosh, you're not going to hear it again. So oxygen bleach, if you have any questions about oxygen bleach, um, just put it in the, um, about, <laughs> uh, put it in the, um, put it in the chat. Happy to help you. Um, the, you, you, if you let, and here's the thing, you, you need to, um, you need, you need to make sure that the wood is dry. Here's why you, whenever you clean a deck, a wood deck, this is really important. Once again, you got to think about this. This is a, this is critical thinking skills 101. If you've ever had a, like a dried, I actually have a video about this uh, on my channel. I forget what it's called. I did a really neat video um, showing you what happens when you put a drop of water in a piece of kind of, you know, worn or weathered treated lumber. So I um, I was out on my deck one day. I, I don't have a treated lumber deck. I've got treks. But um, I thought this is cool. And so I put a drop of water on the wood and it was untreated. It was treated lumber, but it was not sealed. And, you know, the drop of water stayed right on the spring wood for a little bit, for maybe five seconds. And all of a sudden, whew, in it went. I mean, it just went right into the wood and there was no droplet on the surface. Okay. So I'm sure you've seen that happen before. So think about that. If you go, if you went, okay, um, I want to deep clean the wood and I want the cleaner to soak into the wood to get below the surface. Well, if, if the wood is already wet, if you've saturated the wood by spraying a hose on it, then all the cleaner is going to stay up on the top. So you don't want that. You want to apply it to dry wood. And you also want to work like with stain solver or any other cleaner like that. You, you don't want to work in the middle of the day. You don't want to be starting this deck project at 10 in the morning working when the sun's high in the sky on a breezy part of the day. You want to work early in the morning when the deck is in the shade or, you know, late afternoon, whatever it takes. But you do not want to, because the, what's going to happen is the cleaner is going to evaporate too quickly. All right. So you, 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 I'm trusting me. I've cleaned so many decks with this. If you just spray this stain solver solution on and it bubbles and it foams, and if you just leave it alone, but make sure it's, you have an abundant amount of this solution on the wood, it's working on its own. You're going to have to do minimal scrubbing. Minimal. Trust me. I'm telling you. It's magic. Then you just rinse it and uh, let it dry. And then you're going to put a sealer on. So now the sealers. Let's talk about sealers. <laughs> I did say you were killing the flipping tree. I told her that. But she just wouldn't. I mean, B Barbara and I were kind of like this. I mean, we, um, we didn't fight. But she... Um, I'll tell you the story in just a minute. I'll tell you the story. It's pretty funny, actually. The um, So sealers. Years ago, you could find penetrating wood sealers. All right. So I, I don't have enough time and energy to investigate this. 
But I think the deck sealing industry is kind of guilty of what the roofing industry did. If you remember, I talked yesterday about what happened, how they pre-aged the shingles. I have seen over the past 25 years the transition of penetrating wood sealers for decks into products that we call that I call and some of us call film formers. So what is a film former? It's a product that when it dries, it leaves a film, a very thin film on the surface. And in some cases, it can almost look like a urethane, like a glossy. And some people like that look. They, they like that, that shiny look because it, a lot of times people impart shininess with clean. All right, I get that. But then you pay the price for that because what happens is when those finishes fail, they peel. And if you don't have it all off, if you don't take it all off, um, what happens is when you go to reseal, your deck looks really blotchy. It's horrible. So that so what happens is if you want your deck to look beautiful all the time, if you use the film former sealant, then sometimes you have to strip it off, and that's that's crazy hard, crazy hard. I did find, and I'm going to test, I'm going to, I'm actually going to do a video. I'm going to do a free video, I think. I think I'm going to do it free. I don't know. Um, this um, spring, so two years ago, I had to rebuild four of my boat dock panels. And it's just like a deck. I use cedar because that's what we use. And the, um, I'm going to hit this. Some, some idiot's trying to call me. I don't know. I hope it's not you. <laughs> don't mean to call you an idiot, but I just, jeez. Like flip and hang up the phone. I had to um, build these new dock panels, and it was time for my dock to get resealed. And the pre the the previous company that had built the dock panels had used one of these stupid film formers. And in some places, it filmed uh, uh, it it fell off and flaked off. Other places, it didn't. I was not about to strip all of it. I didn't care because I don't go down to the dock that often. All right, so I don't care. But all the new cedar, I sealed beautifully with this. With I, what I used was Cabot's um, Cabot um, Australian timber oil because I did some research, and and from their literature, it said it was a penetrating, a penetrating product, not a film former. And it looked to me like that's what it did. But that but proof is going to be in the pudding this spring. And here's what I did though for the because I knew I was going to record a video. I took a piece of the brand new cedar, you know, I had to, you know, when I bought the lengths, I ended up with a little bit of extra when I cut and I sealed some of this cedar um, at the same time I was sealing the dock panels and um, I took it, I let it dry for, you know, about four or five hours. And then I brought it and put it in my garage because I wanted it out of the light. I didn't want any sunlight to touch it. So it's been in my garage for two years. So it's going to be really interesting to bring that piece of wood out and lay it on one of the clean dock panels so you can see what happened after two years. So that's what we're going to do this spring. Any questions about uh, cleaning a deck or sealing a deck? Because I've really told you about all I know, uh, but I'm happy to answer any questions. As far as composites, they're a lot easier to clean uh, because they don't get as dirty because it, you're basically just cleaning a plastic. So it's really, really simple to clean a composite deck. Uh, same process, but you're going to find it's much, much simpler. And in fact, most of the time, if you have a capped type um, composite, like I have Trex Transcend, where it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a composite deck material, but it actually has a vinyl cap on it. Um, I mean, that you can just clean with regular Dawn dish soap and, and water and a push broom. It's, it's that they, I, I've had my Trex Transcend deck down now for, six years and I've never cleaned it. <laughs> never. It looks as good as the day I put it down. So I can't say enough good things. All right. Any, uh, any questions um, about anything about your home, uh, about decks, about deck sealers, about oxygen bleach? Uh, while you're typing your question, um, oh, I need, I want to do something here. I just, I'm getting ready for the stream and I, I, I click something I've never clicked before on my screen and um, I can, um, I think, I don't know, it's, um, no, it's, it's, I thought it would tell me something. I thought it would, I thought it would give me a cheat sheet of who the workers are. 
All right, but it doesn't seem to be working. All right, I'll have to try it again. So remember, if you have any question about anything about your home, just ask me. Uh, happy to happy to try to help you out. I'll tell you the story um, about uh, what was I going to tell you? Um, um, oh, come on, it was right it's right on the tip of my tongue. I was just talking about. Help me out here. I said I was going to tell you about this um, funny story. Oh gosh, I hate when that happens. I should write it down. Um, It'll come to me. I swear it'll come to me. Victor's got a termite problem. Good. Let's go. Talk to us, Victor. Tell me about your termite problem. While we wait for Victor to type to us about his, his um, termite problem, uh, we are adding people to Discord. Uh I added a lot from my newsletter on Sunday. I'm going to be promoting it each Sunday. I think when we get to about 500 or 1,000 people, we're going to start to get close to critical mass. And there'll be enough people there that there's some activity there, you know, going on through the day. You know, right now it's a little quiet. That's okay. Uh, and I think some people are trying to learn how to use it. All right, Victor, tell me what your termite problem is. Type it out. The tree killer. Oh, yeah, exactly. I'll tell you about Barbara. Yes, that was it. I'll tell you why Barbara and I, but I'll wait. Now, Victor just got back. So here we go. Uh, all right, there are trails on the wood. I had a treatment last year where they injected poison around the house. Okay. That's okay. Don't worry. I understand. I got it that you can't type so fast. No problem. And the other trouble is, Victor, sometimes there's a there's a latency. Sometimes when you type, it might not show up that I can see it for a minute or so. Typically, okay, so the mud trails came back. All right. That doesn't surprise me because um, the termites, I explained this the other day. I talked a little bit about termites. Here's what you need to know about termites. They're one of the smartest insects out there. And they their natural instinct is to have multiple food sources. So they are constantly looking for new food sources. I would have hoped that, that when you hired this company, that they gave you a warranty. Uh, almost all of the big national companies, like Terminex, um, I can't think of a few others, but Generally, they come with pretty good warranties. So did you do, did you get a warranty? Do you remember getting a warranty from these people? Um, okay, good. All right. So the first thing you need to do is just call them back. Make sure you take photos. <clears throat> take photos of the... Uh, and it's best, actually, uh, just like you sometimes see um, in hostage situations, <laughs> you know, where they hold up a copy of today's newspaper or somehow, in other words... You know, if they, you need to be able to show that once they come back and you get rid of the trails, like you'll brush them off the wall, then you, um, you know, you need to shoot a video to show, okay, here it is, April 1st, 2022, and there are no mud trails. So that when they come back again, you could say, okay, look, here's the video. There weren't any, your treatment's not working very well. So you just have to have them come out and, and retreat. But they say they can't kill them. No, that's not true. That's not true. Here's uh, and here's what you need to do, Victor. Go to, go to my website. Actually, I'll do it for you. I'll give you the link right here. I'll help you out, my friend, because you're you're you got a great question. All right, I'm bringing up for you. I'm bringing up an, an old, this is an old, uh, I have a bunch of columns on my website, and I think this is a really good one. I'm just trying to check. And then, to, before I give you the link, but I'll tell you how I found it. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is a pretty good one. All right, Victor. I'm trying to get back. There we go. So here we go. I want you to read this column. And after you read that column while you're at the website, you should be able to find the search bar. 
type in termite again, just type in the word termite. That's what I just did. And I got about 10, about 10 columns that came back, 10 of them. You need to read all of them because you need to, because when they, because what, whoever told you what they just told you, they're not telling you the truth or, or, or they are not knowledgeable. In other words, it could be somebody intentionally lying, but it's also possible that the person doesn't understand how term what what happens. So I'm going to give that person the benefit of the doubt. But you need to arm yourself with the facts. And I have all the facts for you about how termites work, how they live, what they do, and how how you can kill them. And this fact that once they're in the wood, you can't kill them, that is completely 100% false. Yeah, yeah, Victor, I know. that You're right. The, yeah, we used to be able to use chloridane. All right, well, we can't use it anymore because of the flipping tree huggers. All right, but maybe they're right. All right, chloridane. You can't get it. All right, I know. But there are other chemicals that do work that will kill, that absolutely will kill the nest and kill the colony. So if they're telling you, so here's what's crazy. You, if, if I was talking to the owner of that company, I would say, well, if you're telling me that the, that the chemicals don't work and they don't kill the termites, why do I have you out here? What good is it that you're spraying all this stuff? That's the kind of critical thinking question you need to challenge them with. And you can do it in a non-threatening way. All right. So go read all that stuff, Victor. You're welcome. Go read all of my columns about termite stuff. And you will be armed to the teeth to have a really intelligent conversation. And I'm telling you right now, you, you're you wasting your time talking to the poor applicator guy. You need to go talk to the owner of the company. You need to call up the company and say, I want to talk to the owner. And if it's a big national company, then you'd say you want to talk to the general manager and you want him to come out to your house. Let me get caught up. Jimmy wants to clean my deck. Okay, come and do it, but you need to. It's it's not dirty. Um, Mental says, but what about the Russians? I don't I don't know what you mean about the Russians. I um, here's what you need to know about the Russians. Let's assume. <laughs> let's assume right now that it's really true that Russia is invading the Ukraine. All right, for whatever reason. You know, because they want to take Ukraine for their own. You know, it's it's really no different. I mean, did you ever watch the movie Napoleon Dynamite? You know, and early kind of in the movie, there's that bully, you know, in the school who shakes down the kids for money. You know, he choked that one kid. And he, the kid gave him the money. All right, well, that we're just playing the Game of Thrones stuff. It just it just bullying on a on on an epic flipping international scale. But if you're upset about Russia invading Ukraine and taking it for their own, then you need to be the first person in line. <laughs> I'm serious about what I'm going to say here. You need to be the first person in line that says, wait a minute. We need to give Hawaii back to the queen and her descendants because we stole Hawaii. We did, just so you know. We completely stole Hawaii from the Hawaiian people. Hawaii was a sovereign nation. And we did the same thing with Panama, <laughs> if you're not aware of that. Panama, the country Panama, where the canal is, that used to be Colombia. It was not a separate company. Country, I'm sorry. It was not a separate country. <laughs> and the people who lived there were neglected because the people back in the main part of Colombia just ignored them. And so they came to the U.S. and said, listen, we're sick of these guys. <laughs> help us help us get away from them. <laughs> and we did. <laughs> we, we stole Panama. And the deal we cut was, OK, we'll help you. But you know what? We want to build a canal and we get to own the canal. <laughs> and they said, OK, go ahead. We just want to we just want our own country. So we we did all that. that that's what happened. That's not in the history books. <laughs> so
So if you're upset about Putin going into Ukraine, you got to say, listen, we got to give Panama back to Colombia. Sorry. And we got to give Hawaii back. And we have to give Wake Island back. And we have to give Samoa back. All that. We stole all that. We stole it all because we didn't want the Japanese to get it. <sighs> okay, Victor, good for you. You're going to be so smart about termites, Victor. And, and here, Victor, after you read the columns, after you talk to the general manager or the owner, I need you to come back here and give us a full report, okay? Uh, you're the best. All right. I don't know about that. I, I, I'm I, just Tim Carter. I, I'm no different than you. All right. Uh, mental, you're welcome. Everybody here, that's a good point. So Mental says, thanks for all your, your knowledge. Everybody is smart about something. God made us all different. And we all have different skills and talents. All right. So, for example, I can't sew very well. You might be a good sewer, a seamstress. I can't golf very well, but Will, Will is a good golfer. Um, good night here. So good night is really good with computers. I'm so I, I'm okay, but I'm not a flipping whiz. All right. Um, y, y, and and everybody's got. I don't I don't know what skills you have. In fact, I would love to know what skills you have. Why don't you tell me right now, and don't be bashful. Just list your top, like, list your top two superpowers. I mean, what you really excel in. Go ahead. And I don't care if it's flipping doing laundry, because some people suck at doing laundry. Some people put the colors in with the whites. <laughs> they wonder why their T-shirts are pink, all right? <laughs> Maybe you're a fantastic cook, you know? It doesn't matter. So I, I'm really interested in, in what your, your superpowers are. I don't know, Jason. You know, people say I'm an internet celebrity. I must not be that much of a celebrity because here's how I rate celebrities. Meaning if, um, I don't know, I'm you know, I'm not really good with pop culture. Well, hey, I'll just say, if Michael Jackson were still alive and, and he walked into my shopping in my grocery store, a lot of people would recognize him. And they'd go, look, look, that's Michael Jackson. You know, or if Tom Brady, if Tom Brady walked into our grocery store, believe me, in New Hampshire, hey, Tom, how you doing? Hey, man, you blew us off and went to Tampa, but all right, I'll forgive you. Yeah, I go to the grocery store all the time. I go to town. Nobody says, hey, they asked the builder guy. <laughs> so I don't consider myself a celebrity. <laughs> oh. You, so there you go, Victor, portfolio management. That is amazing, Commander. Um, so see, I'd have questions for you. I would have questions. Like, you need to be in my Discord. Look at the link that uh, is just above. You, I, I would love to create a section there about investing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you would be, your knowledge would be really help a lot of people there, Commander. I'm telling you right now. Uh, so mental. So there you go. You're an HVA person. Good for you. All right. Um, so good night. I, I didn't know how to fold t-shirts. And then I watch this video, man. I am, I can do exactly what they do in those videos. Like I can fold a t-shirt in my four seconds here. Speaking of t-shirts, I told you I'd show you mine today. So there it is. So if Lorraine was here, it would really mess her. It would really make her angry. All right. I think, but she, she gets it. So, uh, <laughs> I knew someone was going to type that. Jason says, I bet Tom Brady can't change a four-way stitch. No, he can't. No, he cannot. But he can afford to pay somebody $1,000 an hour to do it. <laughs> oh, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Keep it clean, man. Just that's got to keep it clean. Don't know. That's that, that kind of stuff's not appreciated here, just so you know. Um, Victor used to work at Goldman Sachs. Yeah, I, dude, I'm telling you, you need to get on discord. And if you do, 
you need to uh, email me. I am happy to put a create a new investing channel to get investing advice. People, you would help a lot of people. Um, so there's a great. So so Will wants to know if uh, Victor. He wants Will wants to know if you like bit if you like crypto if you like crypto of any type. Um. Yeah, Victor. Some look at that. Someone paid a half a million dollars. That's great. And boy, don't they feel bad now that he's come out of retirement? <laughs> oh my gosh. Exactly. Not worth as much anymore. It's it's worthless. Are you kidding me? It's worth maybe 500 bucks. Comes out of retirement, announced it yesterday or the day before. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Um, that's hilarious. If you like what you're hearing, make sure you hit the like button. That really helps us, helps us uh in, in Google's eyes. <clears throat> um and also um what did I want to say? Um, just try to do your best to spread the word around if you can, you know, the good word about ask the builder and whatever. Because then maybe one day what Jason says will come true. Maybe one day people will actually stop me in the street and say, hey, you're the ask the builder guy. Although it's happened three times in my life, three times in 28 years. And one of those times was about two and a half months ago. Some guy actually in the grocery store, I was in the produce section, he came up and said, hey, you're the guy, you're the Ask the Builder guy on YouTube. So that just, <laughs> that's only one out of three times in 28 years. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, Victor had a good question about the flipping termites. Termites, um, they are so smart. They they like to go out and they the, the queen tells them, go out, go to five, six different places. We don't want all the same food. We want to get different food sources. And that's how they try to keep the colony alive. But Victor, what happens is there are modern poisons out there. See, here's what you need to understand. Here's what the termites do. So the termites that are coming to your house, they are, they're like little harvesting machines. So they grab some of the wood, a very small amount, tiny amount. And then they come back to the colony. They walk all the way back and then they regurgitate it. They spit the wood out because there are other termites and the queen back at the colony and these worker termites bring the food back to them. So when they saturate the wood with the poison or they, they put the poison out um, and they bring back poison, they, they end up killing the uh, colony. You know, they poison them. But here's the bad news. Here's Victor. Here's the bad news. This is the really bad news. Just because if you're lucky and you kill the current colony that's that's harassing your home, next spring, <laughs> a new colony could form next door and start it all over again. That's what's so bad about termites. They It's like they never end. It's like the sun coming up each day. All right, Al. Uh, okay, good. Thanks for getting rid of that. Um, so... Um, All right. Um, okay. Victor says, I'd be happy to share my knowledge. Okay, good. So you uh, want to click the Discord link and go to Discord. Uh, good night. I'll put it back up again. And just join. It's And you're joining a private server. It's not like being on Facebook. That's a really big distinction. You know, because if you join like fascist book, then everybody in the world can see you. That's not the case on, on, on my server. The only people that can see you are the people that have joined the server. So it's a very private community or private group of people. All right. And once you're there, if you do sign up, you need to email me. You need to contact me. I will then set up an area, a channel, a category called investing. And then under that category, we can have different channels. Like it could be stock tips. It could be cryptocurrency. It could be real estate, whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable. I mean, that's, that's why I, that's why Goodnight told me about this. That's why I'm investing time in it, because it's a great way to share knowledge to our family here. Simple as that. And you're going to become a termite expert, too. So there's the link right below your termite expert comment. Just go there, 
It's free. And pick a screen name, a, 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 whatever screen name you want. Hopefully it's not taken. Don't pick your name. Don't tell everybody who you are. Uh, yeah, let me know how it goes. It's really, really simple. It's really, it may seem intimidating at first, but it's not that hard. Are there uh, any other questions you, you might have? Here we go, mental. What about bringing in ants and starting? <laughs> the ants always win. <laughs> um, the, here's the deal. The termite's pretty smart. Uh, that's a great question, by the way, mental. So the ant, here's what the termites do. If you don't know, the termites do not, the worker termites, only the worker termites come to the house. And they do not like sunlight. They like, it's, they're like vampires. They are not big fans of sunlight. So they build these mud tubes um, to travel in so that they're protected from the light. So that also, you know, duh, it protects them from predators. <laughs> so the ants can't get to them unless the ants tear apart the tubes. Termites are so smart. You have no idea. And I talked about that a week ago. Here, here's what fascinates me. You know how big a termite is? It's about half the size of a dried grain of rice. All right. That's the termite. That's the worker termite. So think how tiny their head is. Their head is about the size, I don't know, of like a period on a typewritten page. Maybe half the size of that. And inside that is their brain. <laughs> Do you, anybody who doesn't believe in God, I'm serious. Anybody who says, no, no God, then I would go, then you explain to me how termites are so smart. <laughs> Who created that? <sighs> Union carpenter ants. <laughs> um, Will said, just found carpenter ants in a bundle of cedar shingles. Um, yeah, so carpenter ants only will only bore and only go for wet wood. So I'll bet you that the cedar shingles were wet. All right. They will not bother dry wood. You cannot have wood wet. All right. So yes, Oak Grove. Is there? A, yes. Great question. Go to my website. Go to askthebuilder.com and type in carpenter bees into the search engine. Wait till you see what you find. Um, all right. Um, there's so much information at the website. I I mean, I've been writing for 28 flipping years, okay? 28 years. All right, so there's so much information there. Just go, anytime you've got a question, go to the website and and type it in. T type in, and here, here's a tip. A lot of people don't know how to use search engine, I've, I've discovered. They, they'll type in like this long sentence, like, what does it cost to wash windows in San Francisco? No, it would be window washer San Francisco. <laughs> all right, that's all you got to do. So, or window washing, or in your case, you would just go to my search engine and type in carpenter bee, or or Victor would type in termite, or termites, plural. Um, or you would type in, let's say you want to know how to finish drywall. You would type in just, you don't don't type in how to finish drywall. Don't do that. Just type in drywall finish or drywall finishing or finishing drywall and drywall. In other words, just start with two words and you're going to get so much better results. Oh, my gosh. Just uh, some people just don't understand how to search engines. Um, OK, any other questions about anything? I don't care what it is. I don't, it could be. It could be about anything. <laughs> it could be about anything. I really don't care. Uh, <laughs> I am getting some new artwork. Uh, I'm going to also, um, I'm probably going to have a poll at, uh, in fact, yeah, in fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a poll on my website because I can't do it here. I can do it on Discord too. Um, I'm getting ready to, I have to get some artwork done. But I'm going to start having, and this was Lorraine's idea, and also um, it was somebody else's idea, and I apologize for not remembering who it was. Maybe it was Steve from the UK. I don't know. But about having asked the builder gear. Jason, it could have been you. I don't know. Well, we're going to have asked the builder gear. We're going to start with T-shirts. It's going to expand. 
And but I want you to help me design them. So that's that's what we need to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna need some help. So I'm gonna come up with prototypes, and then you can see what it looks like, and then you can vote as to what what they do, and just suggest what we do. So we have so we get the T-shirts that everybody wants. I'll also um, have, um, I'm going to do it with my newsletter list too. How many kids do you have? I've got three children, two girls and a boy. They're all great, but I'll tell you this much. Um, that song, Cats in the Cradle, it's true. So if you have young children at your home, you better spend as much time as you can with them. Golf balls. It might be a possibility. Well, I can I can actually do it, but I don't only if they're available on spring. I'm not going to get in the business of I mean, you and I both know well, I can get logo balls made till the cows come home. I've actually had some made. Actually, I might have a really cool one here to share with you that I made for a friend. Um, yeah. Yeah, I got it. This is kind of an interesting story. So I'm going to show you these two golf balls with a, that, that I made for a friend of mine. And um, we were really good friends, really good friends. And we knew way back when. I mean, I met this person. Wow. Wow. Um, 18 years ago. And he was part of the internet mastermind group that I helped start up. And we knew way back then that we were, you know, we were kind of polar opposites um, when it comes to politics. So we just said, there, why talk about it? So we never did. And then this whole illness came up. And I guess... President Trump was in his last year of office. And I guess something happened and this friend of mine just lost it. <laughs> and he emailed me one day and um, politics. And I, I, he started, he started the exchange and I, I came back pretty harsh with the proof, you know, because he said something that wasn't true. And that was it. That was the end of the friendship. Never heard from him since. Anyway, so I made, um, I got this golf ball made. I'm trying to hold it so you can read it. So it says USS Murray. That's a submarine. And, and the whole purpose of this is this guy was very inclined when we played golf. He always hit him into the flipping water. And then the last time I was together with him, um, I got these, this softball made. That's his picture. So you can get you can get some really cool golf balls made, all right? Really cool and um, really cool. Um, but I do not want to be in the business of getting golf balls made and having to ship golf balls to people. I'm not doing that. Um, okay, Jack, raise ten ten concrete one. You want to raise the 10 by 10 concrete one and a quarter inch on earth and there. So Jack, do, do you, do you just need to have the top level of the surface an inch and a quarter higher? In other words, has the whole slab sunken down and you just want to bring it back up? Is that what you're trying to do? Yes or no? So I'm waiting for Jack to say just yes or no. He might be typing a whole bunch of other stuff. But you can do just so you know, really, really cool things with um, with golf balls. So I'll tell you the story of why that last golf ball had um, my friend's face on it. Um, there's actually a great. Um, OK, yeah, Jack, just I'll be with you in just a second. I, I got to go to YouTube and find this video. <laughs> You're going to love this video. Um, as soon as I can bring it up, I don't know. Here we go. Uh, the, uh, oh, and actually, um, Will, I'm going to suggest that you maybe go to the bathroom right now before you. Uh, 
is you are going to howl with laughter. <laughs> Will will really understand this video. If you've not played golf before, you're not necessarily um, going to... Um, <laughs> Um, you're not going to necessarily, yeah, here it is. This is a great video. Oh my God. I had so much fun with this. This is my friend. This is before things went south. And just so you know, it was by, um, the overlords, uh, did that on purpose. In other words, have you gotten into arguments? Uh, I've lost about five friends because of the illness. It's all by design. They they hate us. The pe the the overlords, the people up here, they hate. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta stop that. Sorry. Oh my god. Here at Coyote Willow. <laughs> this video is so flipping funny. <laughs> um. So good night. We definitely want to put this video on Discord. <laughs> uh, I don't know where to put it though. Uh Oh, we're going to put it on Discord for you. We're going to put that link on Discord. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> so I made those balls for the last time I saw him. So that video you're going to watch was made maybe, I don't know, four years ago. Let me see when I made it. Yeah, September 2018. That's what I thought, four years ago. Uh, and then we... We went on another trip, a little man self-discovery trip on 2019. That was the last time I saw him. And things really kind of started to fall apart then too. Um, there was some foreshadowing and we played golf. Well, I presented him with this ball with his face on it for a reason. And you'll see it. You'll understand when you, you watch that video. <laughs> okay, Jack. Um, I don't know. Here's the thing. You, there, there are companies that come out and can slab jack, all right? There are companies, they come out, they drill holes. They, 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 these are big commercial operations. They do it at airports, the, the airport runways, like, you know, where the plane, the big heavy planes touch down. You know, they, they try to do everything possible to make that concrete never sink, but sometimes it does. And it's very important for airport runways to be smooth. Very important. All right, so... They can raise concrete slabs. I mean, you can raise a slab that weighs 20, 30 tons. Not a problem. Not a problem. They drill down. They drill holes about two inches in diameter, and then they start to pump a slurry. Uh, just think um, applesauce. Just think of applesauce. So it's a slurry of cement and uh, fly ash and whatever. Very fluid. And, man, you'll just float that slab up to wherever you want. They can, they can completely level one up, whatever. All right, the problem is is that if you do it on a residential base, they don't care. It doesn't matter if it's a commercial parking lot or an airport runway that there is these ugly flipping polka dots that they have to patch after the fact. But on your beautiful patio out back, nobody wants to see these flipping polka dots because that's what you end up with. Wherever they drill a hole, you end up, they patch it and it does not match. What if I told you, you could put a concrete overlay, you could put a concrete overlay made out of pea gravel over that and get it to whatever level you want. So you don't, and you can do it yourself. Maybe a, because it's a little thicker, you'll need a little bit of help, but, and you can do it much, much cheaper. You, you probably could buy a 10 by 10 inch and a quarter. You could buy all the material you need for less than you'd need probably two bags of, of cement, which would be, what's a bag of cement now cost 10 bucks, $15 with inflation. So $30 for cement, um, some sand and some gravel. Um, hundred bucks. You're in, and if you go to pay a slab jacker, it's going to be two, three grand. All right. So I have all these columns on my website. Go to askthebuilder.com, askthebuilder.com, and type in concrete overlay, concrete overlay, O V E R L A Y. Read all of those columns, Jack. And um, I'm telling you, that's the best way to do it. Cheaper, same. You get the exact same result. You're going to have a beautiful finish on it, whatever you want. You can colorize it. You can throw, you can make it red. You can make it blue. You can make it green. You can make it brown. You can make it look like leather, whatever. You could stamp it. If you want to have a stamp texture, you can do any number of things. 
Uh, all right. Let's see. Will said, did you deliberately hit his golf ball face into the water? No, no. He's, he was a really great friend. It's just that, um, that my wife has shown me studies and, and I, you know, I don't know if they're jaded or not, but there are studies that have been done that show that, that people who are of the, who, who are left leaning and who are liberal, that they're very unhappy. And I happen to know one of them. I happen to know this woman who is so flippin' unhappy um, because the left is constantly waging this war of fear, whereas conservatives tend to be a much more positive. Um, they, they have a different outlook on life. So my friend, I think, just got, um, I don't know, I don't know. It's a really sad but no, I wouldn't hit his golf ball in the water. But he he would hit his golf ball in the water. He didn't do it deliberately. A lot of his balls over the past 15 years in the water. It's like there was a magnet. I mean, just in the water, gone. That's why I made the submarine ball. Oh, uh, no. No, 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 no. Uh, the woman who's the liberal, well, she was liberal, no doubt about it. She was a big Democrat in Cincinnati. Uh, but this other woman I'm talking about happens to be... Uh, uh, well, just a really good friend of mine. Happens to be a really good friend of mine. And uh, it's really sad. I mean, it's really sad. Just really sad. All right. Uh, so um, I'll tell you a quick story about um, this woman who killed the tree <laughs> and why we didn't get along. I think I've talked about this before in a past live stream. I'll tell it again. So crutch word. When Kathy and I bought the lot that we built our last house on in Cincinnati, we bought that lot, oh my gosh, a long time ago. Well, I know exactly when we bought it. We would have bought it in the spring of 1986. We, this lot, okay, so this lot was nine tenths of an acre. And this, village that we're in is called Amberley Village. And this, this part of the, this, this little subdivision, this street that I lived on was not originally part of Amberley Village. It got annexed. They, they asked to become part of Amberley and Amberley accepted them years later. The street that I lived on was put in before World War II. And some of the lots, many of the lots on the street were not one acre. But years later, the Amberley Village zoning code said that there were two classifications, Class A and Class B zoning. Class A was one acre lots, Class B half acre lots. But my street, all of the lots were Class A, all right? They were grandfathered in, even though they were not one acre. So they had to abide by all of the Class A rules in, in, the, in the zoning book. I, I was on the planning and zoning board for eight years. But I wasn't on when I bought the lot. We see this lot. I, I had been looking around for lots, and, and I knew that if you wanted a really, really good lot uh, at that time, you had to spend about 50 grand. You know, and I'm talking about kind of in close to Cincinnati. And this lot was magical. This lot backed up to French Park, to the undeveloped part of French Park. And, I mean, it, it's this, the, actually down just about 150, 200 feet away from my home that I built. Yeah, 200 feet. There were still old growth timbers, trees that had been there since like the 1700s. You know, it was a completely undeveloped part of this park, this thing called French Park. Go look it up. Go look it up. Go online. Look up French Park, Cincinnati. It's part of the Cincinnati Park system now, even though it's not in Cincinnati. This lot had been owned. It had never been built on. A vacant lot. It was the only vacant lot on the street. And it had never been built on. And the reason why is because the person who owned it lived across the street. He had bought the, he had bought that lot across the street in my lot in, in the 1950s. 
And he was a very successful printer in downtown Cincinnati. And he did not want to look out his picture window because back then the ranch houses all had these big giant picture windows in the living room. That's That was the trend. And he did not want to look out his picture window sitting at his couch and look at another house. He wanted, And then he had so much money, he hired a, a gardener. He and his next door neighbor hired a gardener that worked for them. They, he, they just split the, the gardener's labor. Each of them got 20 hours a week. And this gardener cultivated gardens on my lot. You know, and, and and the guy who owned the lot even put in water service. He paid to have a water tap put in and a water meter with an underground pit. And so that his gardener could put out a hose and water all these flowers and everything. It's crazy. It's a true story. So this woman who lives next door, <laughs> she, the, the, the guy who owned the lot, he eventually got sick and passed away. And I think also as he was getting older, he didn't take care of it any longer. So she started to kind of use part of the lot. All right. You know, she just kind of clear. She just kind of used part of it, you know, what she should not be doing. Kathy and I see the lot in the paper. Uh, I was a real estate broker. I immediately go down and we look at it. I I, I find out, I, I, I call this other guy that was on the zoning board that my father-in-law knew. He said, no problem. You're going to be able to build a house. Trust me. I know it's not an acre. Trust me. Everything's going to be fine. Okay, good. I put in the offer. Uh, we get the offer was accepted. And then a day or two later, after we knew the offer was accepted, we we come down and we park in front of the lot. And also, you need to understand this. All these years that, that I had driven by this lot, because my wife's parents live five houses away. No one knew this was a vacant lot. No one even knew it existed. They all thought that the lot was partially owned by the two houses on either side. No one knew it was a vacant lot. Because it was it was shaped like this. All right. So it only had here at the street, it only had about 60 feet. But it was real wide at the back. Kath and I pull up, get out of the car, the truck, I don't know, whatever. And we walk on the lot. You know, we're super happy. We just bought this new lot. We're going to build our dream home. <laughs> and we're walking on the lot. And this lady comes out. And, and here's what her face looked like. She says, who are you? What are you doing here? I mean, that's how she said it. That's not a good way to start a relationship, right? <laughs> and, and I said, oh, I said, I'm serious. This is exactly what I said. I said, you know, she didn't tell me what her name was or whatever. I just said, I held out my hand to shake her hand. I said, we're your new neighbors. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She didn't shake my hand. What? What? What do you mean? I said, oh, we, we, we just bought this lot. What do you mean you bought the lot? I said, well, it was for sale. I know it was for sale. Uh, what did you pay? I'm serious. That's exactly what she said. Could you imagine saying that to somebody? That would be like me asking her right then, like, how much do you weigh, lady? How much do you weigh? Come on, tell me. You look a little chubby. <laughs> so, I, and I told her, I said, I paid 35 grand. Oh, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. It's not even worth that. You're crazy. I put an offer for 5,000 and they rejected it. I said, you're the idiot. I said, because lots like this, they're worth about 50 grand. All right, so I, I knew. So that's how we started out. So, <laughs> and then I'll tell you this, 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 this. Then, then the next time I saw her, <laughs> this is hilarious. All right, so I'm gunning for her now. I'm gunning for her. You know, we start to build the house. Um, I'm there working every day, every day, seven days a week. And and the side of the house, the the ground naturally sloped a little bit towards her house, which meant that the top of the foundation. On, on her side of the lot was about four feet out of the ground, all right? And then you've got the subfloor on top of it, and I'm using two by 12 joists, so the top of the subfloor is like five, like 64 inches up off, off the uh, soil. And I'm, I'm outside on that side of the house one afternoon. No one's around. Everybody else went home. She goes, she comes out. What's going to be on this side of the house? You know, that's, I mean, she talked like that. <laughs> she, 
She didn't say, hi, Tim, how you doing? How, how's things going? That's what the normal person would do. She, I'll get to your comments in a minute. And so remember, I'm gunning for this lady, all right? I'm gunning for her. And and I I mean, I'm I'm not as smart then as I am now, but I knew I was smart enough to go. I wasn't going to answer right away. I was going to say, I said, well, why do you need to know that? <laughs> and this is how stupid she was. <laughs> <laughs> she she looked and she pointed at her house and she said see those windows right there those are my daughter's bedroom windows you know and they were teenagers <laughs> and I mean like I went I felt like I had just won the flipping lottery <laughs> I'm serious I thought what how what a stupid mistake to, to tell me that I go, really? I go, that's too bad. That's really too bad. I said, right here on this side of the house. And I, I told a little, I was a little, being a little mendacious, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't. I said, this is our living room and right there is our dining room. And we've got these giant flipping windows, huge, huge windows here. They weren't really that big. And I said, and I said, do you see how high that floor is? I said, when I stand on that floor, my eyes are going to be 10 feet off the ground. I'm going to be able to look right down into your daughter's bedrooms. What do you think about that? <laughs> she, she just turned around and walked away. <laughs> and then like three weeks later, there was this landscaping crew there planting all these flipping evergreen trees <laughs> that take forever to grow. True story. All right. So you, we didn't hit it off that well. All right. Simple as that. All right. Let me get caught up on the comments. <laughs> uh, all right. I don't know about Obama. Uh, who cares about him? Uh, mental. Let me guess now. She claims she owns it because, well, no, she didn't. She didn't. Uh, that's, there's an uh, actual term is called adverse possession in real estate. Um, in Ohio, adverse possession kicks in at 22 years, meaning if you squat on a piece of ground and, and you can prove that you've been there and you build a house or whatever and, and they don't run you off, after 22 years, you can claim it as your own. I'm sure you got to go through a court action, but if you've got all, if you've got all the proof and the owner, the owner of the land didn't do anything to stop you, you get the land or you get a part of it, you know. Revolver says smart thing to say to her. Well, she just, she was a pretty smart woman, but she, um, that's what happens when you let your emotions get a hold of you. Um, you get, you let emotions control you and it, it, everything goes off the rails. Um, so that's the story about her. <laughs> Uh, same thing in Canada. Very interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know what the time frame is up in Canada, but 22 years is, is what it is in the state of Ohio. It could be different in different states here in America. All right. Any questions about your house? I don't have see any questions about people's house. We have we have quite a few people here, and everybody seems to have a house that's in great shape. <laughs> Amateur photographers. Well, I just, I mean, what was so silly about it? What was so stupid about the planting the evergreen trees? Like two things. I mean, two things, seriously. They think they have things called window shades. All right. Duh. Uh, and, and you could tell your daughters, listen, don't walk around the bedroom naked. Okay. Don't walk around the bedroom in your underwear. It, you know, because none of this is hard. Nothing about this is hard. Flipping idiots. Uh, I don't know what L-O-O-L -O -O means. So you did that twice, uh, mental. I don't know what that means. So I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I, you know, what I'm reminded of, if you watch some television, like there are certain television uh, uh, series that are, I think are hilarious. And one of them is Modern Family. I mean, I, got, I just loved it. <laughs> and um, 
if you remember um, Claire and um, what was, uh, how come, how come I can't think of the husband's name? Claire and, um, oh, you know who I'm talking about. Daggone it. Um, it'll come to me. <sighs> I hate when that happens. Um, their daughter, their oldest daughter was Haley. <laughs> and there, this is deep into the series. And she opens up some type of social media account. And her brother or someone say, says that, um, oh, you've got like 100,000 or 200,000 subscribers. Oh, yeah, I know. I don't know how it happened. But she's this real ditzy young woman. And she didn't realize that her camera was on all the time. So she's walking around her bedroom naked. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, I see. L-O-O-L. I got it. Okay, thanks. I'm, see, I, I don't know all the acronyms. Um, <laughs> all right. So... Um, Phil, his name was Phil. The husband's name character was Phil. That's what it was, Claire and Phil. And um, anyway, oh my gosh. Um, all right, any other questions about your home? Any questions about your house, whatever? Because um, I, I don't have to go right at this minute. Uh, I do have a consult phone call I have to do in a little bit. Um, this woman up in Chicago has got this very similar to Jack's situation. That's this. I'm going to give her the same advice. She has this covered front porch, got a big crack in it, and she wants to make it look better. And she thinks she has to tear the whole thing out. And there are some supports on it that are supporting some of the roof. And she's like, she just thinks it's way more complex than it is. And I'm going to give her some really great news. Like, say, you're not going to believe this. You're going to be able to have this beautiful front porch, uh, and you're only going to put on. She's, she's only has to put on about an eighth of an inch overlay, eighth of an inch. That's nothing. Just like stucco. That's like a couple of buckets worth of flipping, you know, maybe three or four or five gallon buckets worth of material. So simple. If she lived closer, I'd come and do it for her. I would actually do it. I would love to shoot a video showing that. All right. Uh, no, no worries. Um, mental. I, you know, I just don't know. So good night. It's got a great question. What's, uh, Okay, so we, that's a great question. Good night. We, um, I've talked about that in the past, but it's always good to hit it again. There, there are some topics that's really good to keep talking about. All right, metal. So here's the good thing a wood is so easy to work with. It's easy to cut, it's easy to fasten things to it. You can nail it, uh, whatever. And it's somewhat of a halfway decent insulator. Not the best, but it's, but it sure as hell better than metal. All right, the trouble with metal studs. No nails. Everything's got to be screwed. That get, that becomes really problematic um, with certain exterior finishes. It's not problematic for putting drywall on because the drywall guys who are hanging drywall, they'll, they'll use screws. They don't care. It's slowly, they're using the screws anyway. They screw the drywall up anyway. The trouble is, is that if you live either in a, uh, it doesn't matter which climate you're in, but the, the, the metal is such a good conductor that it, it'll really conduct the cold back into your home. I mean, you'll have, if, if you, with a thermal camera, like a FLIR camera, if you had wood stud, or if you had metal studs and you were here where Will and I live, and it was, I don't know, five below zero outside, and you pointed your flipping FLIR to the wall, you would see these blue lines, man. If you put the crosshair on it, I'll bet you you'd get a reading of, 40 degrees on, on those blue lines. Um, it would be, the, it would, it would be so cold. Those, the, because the, the actual, the actual steel stud all the way into touching the drywall is going to be like five below zero. And then, you know, there's this battle going on in the drywall between five below and the room temperature. And it, it averages out to like maybe 40. All right. So, so, the, the steel is structurally as strong, uh, and it's just that you can't nail them together when you put together, when you build steel wall, walls built, built out of metal studs, you're screwing everything. You use these tiny little self-tapping screws. Um, it's um, the, here's, here's a good use, though, for them. I would highly recommend to somebody, if you are... If you are um, if you have interior walls and you're going to put a lot of cabinetry on them, 
I would absolutely use steel studs on an interior wall uh, because if you build it right and you take your time and you get it in the same plane, the wall is perfectly flat, perfectly flat. So it makes for a beautiful way to hang cabinets and, and, and so that the cabinets, you're not fighting, putting cabinets together. Um, if you have ceramic tile on a wall, it's wonderful. A tile loves to be laid on a surface that's in the same plane. Uh, there's all kinds of benefits, but never, never, never on an exterior wall in a cold climate. Um, all right, so I hope that answers your question. Jim, or Jeff, so what is the best countertop material that is reasonably priced? All right, well, I hate to say it, uh, laminate, Formica or Wilson Art. Um, they, it's, a, it's a wonderful material. It really is. I mean, if you just take a little care of it and the the patterns now for the laminates, I mean, they are, they're so realistic. So I, I would not hesitate. I mean, here's the only thing you need to know. Here's the big mistake that people don't know about laminate. If you get the countertops, um, because the underside is just made out of particle board, uh, whatever, you have to seal that. You have to put like two or three coats of urethane on it. And where they do the sink cutout, same thing. You have got to seal that. Uh, the only other thing you have to always be careful of with laminate is where they miter it together, they put a seam sealer in, but it fails. So you, you just have to watch. You, you can't have standing water where, where a seam is. That It'll get in. It'll cause the, the, the wood to swell, and it's going to look horrible. But... But if you just take reasonable care of the laminate um, and don't scratch it and don't slide things across it, I've seen laminate countertops that that are 30, 40 years old. They look as good as the day they were put in. So I would I'd give laminate a serious look. They don't get much more affordable than that. Revolver. Is it easy to take out a rear entry door and install one for single? It's easy. Nothing to it. I actually have a, a set of videos that you can watch. Uh, I, I charge for them. It's a t I, step by step, I show you how I took out my front door and put a new one in. And mine was a door with two side lights. It's the same process for a simple door. Um, it's really, 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 really simple. And and you can if you get into trouble, remember, you can always get me on the phone. But go, um, let me, actually, I'll just find it for you right now. Um, I'll just give you the link. Uh, I think it's, uh, I'm just going to type in a front door. And here's the th cool thing. This, this is a really cool thing about my, um, this is, I have this guarantee with my products. All right. Um, you, that you need to know with, with my electronic products. If you go, so revolver, if you go, Buy this product, all right? Go buy this product. Watch all the videos. If after you watch the videos, you say the videos suck, I didn't learn anything, or I'm not happy, I don't care what you say. I do not care what you say. Just say, I'm not happy, I want my money back. I'm going to give you your money back. No questions asked. What have you got to lose? Zero. And you've got everything to gain, because you cannot wait to all the stuff I tell you in these videos. I mean, it's probably... An hour and a half, two hours worth of videos that in that product right there. So buy those videos. Go ahead, watch them. And like I said, if you don't feel they're worthwhile, just say, I want my money back. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just going to say, no problem. Kathy will take care of it tomorrow. All right. Uh, I'm going to buy the door. Okay, but don't buy the door yet. No, stop. <laughs> don't buy it yet. You got to watch the videos because I tell you how to make sure you get the right door. Don't go by the the door yet. <laughs> uh, all right, Jeff said, uh, great answer. It, 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 thank you, Jeff. Um, it, seriously, I'm telling you, Formica or Wilson Art, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's just that when they make that sink cut out, man, you have got to put five or 10 coats of urethane on that wood. Because if any water gets underneath the sink, or the guy doesn't caulk it right, it's going to ruin the top. Orange drink is here. You haven't been here in a while. How you doing? Great that you're here. 
Um, all right. Um, any other, an hour and 24 minutes. Feels like, I say this all the time. It feels like five minutes to me. It's crazy. Will says we're going to be playing golf soon. I don't know, man. I see a lot of snow out there still. I... I cannot wait to play golf on this course of Will's, where Will Will's a ranger. Um, go go look it up. It's it's. I think isn't it Fox Ridge? Is that what it's called, Will? I can. I, I'm sure it's that's what it is. Fox Ridge. It's down in, you know, southwestern Maine. And um, I want you to look at it on Google Maps or look at it on the course. If, if they got photos, look at hole number five is all I can tell you. <laughs> and, and you know what? The course designer, the guy must have been a sadist. I'm serious, a sadist. <laughs> because I'm quite confident that when you drive into this golf course and you drive into the parking lot, you're looking right at flipping hole number, the green of hole number five. And I mean, it's just like, it's like, um, it's like the golf course is trash talking to you before you even get your shoes and sticks out of the car. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, all right. Um, Will says he had to replace the cement board already. I don't know what. Oh, here you go. There you go. I see it up above. What is a good sealer for the cement board that surrounds my skylights? Um, I can't even imagine someone putting cement board around skylights. I'm not, I'm serious. Like what the hell? <laughs> okay. Um, and you had to replace, how, how there's, there's no way it's cement board then. You say you had to replace it. If it's true cement board, the water is not going to harm the cement. It must not be a cement board. But I'm going to answer your question about the mildew. Here's what's going on. So the skylights get cold. Hot air rises. The hot air in the wintertime has got humidity in it. The water condenses on the skylights and runs down. It uh, And plus... You just have a high humidity area up in this enclosed area where the skylight tunnel is. And the reason that mildew is growing is because of the water. And, the, and this is a pain in the ass. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. If you, don't, if you don't want mildew, you have to stop the water or you have to keep the surfaces really clean because you have to remove the food that the mildew is eating. Both of those are hard to do in a, in a skylight area. Very hard to do. Now, one thing you might do, but then this wastes electricity, is you can have a fan. You can have a fan that's blowing air up towards the skylight, which that moving air will evaporate the fine fog that's on the walls of the skylight tunnel so that the mildew won't grow. You can do that. Good night. I, I'll tell you what, you guys are typing all these weird symbols in. I do not know what that stuff means. It's some type of code language. I do not understand it. Shorthand, I guess. Some type of flipping alien space language. Um, all right. So I do not understand what good night's doing. May, I have no idea what it is. All right. doesn't matter. Um, it's a guy flipping a table. It's a, oh my gosh. Woo. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I don't, that's amazing. It's flipping amazing. You can do that. Flipping amazing. Cement board flipping. Okay, got it. All right, so mildew and mold. I We talked about this. It's just like fire. When fire, you need three things. You need fuel, you need heat, and you need oxygen. Mix those things in the right way and you get fire, all right? Just like this, all right? Here's my Numeth Toe Hill, all right? Fire. Bingo. All right. Mold. Mildew. Same thing. Three things. You need mold spores. They're everywhere. 
inside, outside, your, the inside of your home, inside of your apartment, millions of them. They're everywhere. Can't get rid of them. Can't get rid of them. You need food. It's everywhere. All right. There are different types of mold and mildew. They eat different things. Some of them eat dust. Some of them love sugar. All right. So if you spill, have you ever spilled some a soft drink and, and didn't know it was spilled or whatever? And you come back a day or two later, it's all black there. Bingo, man. That's the sugar. The sh some mildew and mold love, love, love sugar. Then the only other thing it needs is water. All right. Well, in bathrooms, all right, we talked about this. This is really important. And this goes back to Jack or uh, whatever his name was, Mike, two weeks ago about sh the pumice stone in toilets. When you take a shower in your bathroom, okay, I'm going to stop right here. Remember when I said you need to start paying attention? It's too late, though. It's too late. Remember when you should have paid attention in flipping physics class in high school? Should have paid attention. What a flipping mistake. All right. You go to take a shower. And before you before you turn the water on, everything in the room's fine. The uh, gla the windows are fine. It's winter time. Windows are fine. The mirror's fine. The mirror's clear. Now, the mirror, if you have a mirror like on a medicine cabinet or a mirror like in my bathroom that is away from the wall, what temperature is the mirror? What temperature is the glass? What is it the same temperature as the interior surface of the wallboard in the room? What temperature is the ceiling? You know, if there's just a room up above, it's the same temperature as the glass on the mirror. Same temperature. So when you get out of the shower, what's the mirror look like? It's all fogged up. Is there fog on the wall and the ceiling? Yes or no? And you wonder why you have mold and mildew problems in bathrooms. All right, so how can you stop it or minimize it? I know you don't like this. Your wife might not like it. It doesn't matter. Well, you have two choices. You can either say, we're going to have mold or mildew, or we're going to put up with this fan. You know the fan I'm talking about? There's simple little $29 fans you can buy at Wally World. The stupid, they sit on a table and they, you know, they're about this diameter, you know, and they go back and forth and they blow. Have one of those in the closet. While you're getting dressed, turn that damn thing on. Leave the, leave the bathroom door open. Get that fan going. Evaporate that flipping water off the walls as fast as possible. You do that, no mold, no mildew. Nothing about this is hard. <laughs> That's gonna, I'm telling you, we're gonna. I'm getting t-shirts made. That's the first t-shirt I'm making. Nothing about this is hard. <laughs> That's what, can you tell how much fun I'm having with these live streams? <laughs> Too bad, Jason. Jason, maybe I maybe I should be a flipping slip. If you guys got the word out there and told people how entertaining it was, maybe we'd have a thousand or two thousand or ten thousand people watching. So you need to help. Just say you gotta watch this crazy guy, this crazy old goat in the afternoon, man. You gotta watch this guy. <laughs> yes. The hat version. We're going to have a hat. We're, I'm going to be the first one to buy one. I'm your biggest fan. I'm, oh, I love it. Oh, my God. Write that down. I got to write that down. Wait a minute. Oh, my gosh. That is hilarious. I have a fan. You could, that, you could get some mileage out of it. <laughs> Orange drink. He's here for the comedy. Oh, my gosh. Well, if Kathy were here, I'm serious. Kathy would say, you are wasting your time. She does not think I'm funny at all. Marcus, 
How you doing, Marcus? I didn't know you've been here. Um, for bathrooms, you get extractor fans. That, yes, yes, yes. You're right. Um, so, yes, yes. All right. The trouble is, so we, they're great bath fans. I, I've got, do you have to, you want to see um, bathroom fan videos and like the ones I put in my daughter's home? I got videos on my website. The trouble is, they do not move enough air fast enough to evaporate the, 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 that fog off the walls. You need to get that wall, fog off there fast, fast. Uh, <laughs> ask them. I suck at telling jokes. I, I am the, I don't understand the whole timing part. I suck at it. I am so bad. And I, I have such great respect for comics. I'm serious. They are just like, some of them are so flipping funny. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> His wife locks him in the room. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, I've had enough for today and I'm going to get ready. I got to do a console call here of uh, that, that wonderful woman up in the Chicago area. Um, she is going to be so happy. You know, I love, love, love doing um, some of these console calls. Uh, here's what happens. When someone orders a console call for me, um, I, I either text them or we send them an email. And I always say the same thing. I say, thanks for the order. Uh, do you have any photos of the problem? Because, you know, picture's worth a thousand words. Uh, and in 25 words or less, tell me what the problem is. And then they send it to me. And in situations like this, sometimes I'll reply back. I'm going to say, I have got such good news for you. Because sometimes some of these console calls I do, a person is faced where they're in a situation where they think they have to spend tens of thousands of dollars. I'm serious. Tens of thousands of dollars. And I come back and say, you're not going to believe this. We're going to solve this for like 200 bucks. I mean, tell me that wouldn't make your day. All right. So I love doing those consult calls like that. Um, Jason says, did you hear about the circus fired out West? I don't know what that means. Circus fire. Uh, maybe you mean circus fire. I mean, I know out West they, they name the fires like they, 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 um, they name them names. Um, I do not know. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. The only fire that I know about that's really hit me hard uh, was the Yarnell fire, the one where those 14 firefighters died about five, six years ago. Horrible. Horrible. July, July 4th, July 3rd. Yarnell, Arizona. Read second line. The flames were intense. <laughs> Okay. All right. I'm a little slow today. All right. <laughs> oh my God. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, <laughs> all right. Come on. You got to keep it clean. Okay. <laughs> Did you hear about the circus fired out? Oh my gosh. <sighs> all right. Got to go. Thanks for being here. Thanks for putting up with me today. Uh, I hope it was a good stream. Like I said, it would be, wouldn't it be awesome to have a hundred people or a thousand people here? Maybe we'll get it one day. If we don't, we don't, we don't. Alan, howdy. Good. We have these lurkers and you finally come in at the last second. Good for you. Uh, Alan, where do you live real fast? If you don't mind. Um, are you in the UK? Uh, real fast? Just curious. I'm just curious. Okay, Jason, I'll see you. Orange drink, I'll see you. I'm going to be out of here, too, in just a minute. Um, trying to figure out. So just, Alan, just real quickly, what country are you in, if you just don't mind telling me? Uh, thank you. Good night for putting the Discord in there. Um, all right. Maybe he's not going to put it in. Uh, I'll, I'll give you... Uh, uh, oh, Ireland. Great. Um, I love Ireland. It's on my bucket list. I really want to go to Ireland and the UK too. I, uh, my wife, my wife's uh, big Irish, big her, you know, I'm not going to tell you her maiden name because of security reasons, um, but Irish as can be. All right. So, um, all right, Alan, thanks for being here. I try to do the live streams. I know it's a little late for you. I know that right now. Uh, try to do the live streams. 
every day about four o'clock Eastern, which would be, um, well, now I'm trying to think it would be four hours. So maybe eight or nine o'clock your time. Uh, anyway, crutch word. I'm going to get out of here. Got to go. I got a lot of, there, there's Discord notifications. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Join the Discord. If you have not joined the Discord, do it. I've got a lot of uh, text messages I got to deal with. And I got to talk to uh, Chrissy. I got to talk to Chris. All right. I'll let you know what Chrissy said tomorrow. Thanks so much for being here. I'm Tim Carter. You've been watching Ask the Builder. And um, ten. it's 10 o'clock right now. Okay, so yeah, you're um, four hours now. You're four hours ahead. Exactly. I should have known that because I've got my ham radio clock on the wall. And right now, you know, universal time is four hours different than our time. So you're right. Okay. Thanks very much for being here. I'm Tim Carter. Ask the Builder right there. And um, thanks for being here, Will. Everybody, good night. Orange, Jason, Alan. Had a lot of people here today. Uh, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. I'm Tim Carter, and I'll be back tomorrow.